Hi, I'm Valerie from the Hollywood Times, and thank you for taking the time with us today. I will let you go ahead and introduce yourself, and thank you for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, my name is Yas Canley. I'm a writer, director, actor, and my first feature film, My Home Unknown, is currently um, circling the festival. So oh, it's really exciting times, and um, that's where we actually met. Yes, we actually have met quite a few times on these festival circuits, and I want to congratulate you because it's so interesting how we've met. We met at, we, you might not remember, you've been at Dances with Films in Los Angeles. Then I met you at the Michel, uh Film Festival, and I interviewed you on their red carpet. Uh, the opening night of of the film festival, and then ran into you surprisingly in Toronto. We had both never been to Toronto for the Female Eye Film Festival, which you won, um, the, the, the film won Best Feature Film. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And um, just thrilled with your film that I had seen um, at the Miss You Film Festival, um, the opening night. So, yes, thank you. I, I really love like how we've been in sync because yes. this has been an incredible start for my home unknown. We world premiered at Dances with Films, where you were as well, and you reviewed some of the films there. And then our second right, right after that following was at the Michelle Film Festival, where you said you, we were the opening night film. So that's where we actually talked for the first time because we we did that little red carpet interview. And then seeing you in Toronto was just incredible. I love that that all three first film festivals were with you together i feel very special very 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 special and if i wouldn't have seen you at the female eye i we wouldn't be doing this interview because i finally was able to give you my card that we could yeah we could talk more about your film and talk more talk about talk more about you and that this is your first film and so look at how fantastic you've come with this first thank film you. so yeah thank you it's it's really kind of mind blowing i'm still taking it in the first uh, really two months have been incredible. We got honored at the Michelle Film Festival too with the um, Panavision Outstanding Feature Film nomination, which was just mind blowing. Just being acknowledged by Panavision was really incredible. And then obviously we were nominated by the Michelle Film Festival too, which was an, a huge honor for, for um, Outstanding Feature, Outstanding Directing, Outstanding um, Acting. Um, yeah, but then... It was very special at the Female Eye Film Festival taking home that that award for best debut American feature. Um, I felt so seen and I felt so honored, especially um, by other women, you know, and, and it's it's again, I'm just learning and growing so much more into um, how valuable our voices are as women and you know we are still not fully enough represented so it's it's important for us to get our stories out so i'm very very grateful that i was acknowledged by these powerful um women and also that's where we met so it's just all so blessed so blessed so we're we're so blessed to to have seen to have this film in your your repertoire um right now because it just everybody has to see it. So we're going to do everything in our power to put it out there for for the audience to to, to watch. Um, where 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 was it filmed? And I know a lot of people haven't seen it, so I know a lot of the answers to this. But I want the uh, our viewers to be able to um, or readers to know where it was filmed and how long did it take you to film? Absolutely. So my home unknown is my first feature film. And um, it's a story about a female artist with schizophrenia who's living on the streets and is journeying through a mental health crisis while she's really finding the courage to accept help and what that looks like. Because there's so many shapes and forms of help that can come towards you if you're fortunate enough. And um, getting to the point of accepting help is, takes a whole nother courage. Um, so that's what the film is about. And we filmed it all over Los Angeles during the height of the pandemic. So that was in 2020. Yeah, 2020. And um, it was wild because, you know, everything was shut down. 
Hollywood was shut down. So everybody was kind of just waiting around and, and not sure what to do. And I said, well, I don't want to wait around. I have stories to tell. And so it was kind of like um, a pandemic baby that that came out. And um, it was a reflection of my immediate world as a director, writer, seeing the large encampments and high numbers of unhoused people rising to skyrocket like levels that we have never seen, had never seen. And then also the creative um, urge of, I want to lend my voice to the unheard or traditionally unheard marginalized voices, people like that. And so I had um, a few ideas that I was playing with before. And so all of this accumulated into this story of my home unknown. And I wrote it actually really, really fast. Um, it was, it just kind of like came out of me. And then I workshopped it um, with um, uh, my great mentor, Bobby Moresco, Oscar winner uh, for Crash. And um, and then we shot it pretty, pretty soon right after that. And because it was the pandemic and I had no financing, no budget, I didn't want to wait for that around. I gathered an incredible group of people around me that was just passionate and inspired about telling the story. Um, so everybody that came on board uh, worked basically for no money, um, which is really, really incredible. And so we had a core group of five people that was kind of like the skeleton crew. Um, and we were just going around the streets of Los Angeles everywhere. I mean, from Burbank to Hollywood, to East LA, to Compton, to downtown, to the industrial areas. We did not shy away from any neighborhoods because we wanted it to be really raw and authentic. That was my main goal, to really portray a story of a woman, of a woman's experience in an authentic and real way. Um, and so we shot kind of over the weekends um, and we shot about, I would say about 15, 16 days, somewhere around that. And then we did a, a few reshoots after we looked at the footage and put some rough together. So um, that that was all done between March and April and then a few pickup shots in like June. And then um, we got... Uh, a post-production team on board, which are a little bit more of like Hollywood old school heavy hitters, um, like Larry Kasanov, Jimmy Einer, um, that were also passionate about the story and wanted to come on board to help raise awareness for homelessness and mental illness. And, um, and he brought his team on board for post-production. So then I actually went back and rewrote some stuff and we filmed uh, a new ending, which is, I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen it, but which is the end of the film, because it just lends a little bit more of a hopeful um, component to the story, uh, which, you know, is rather uh, dense and um, raw. So um, then we shot a couple more days. So I think total, all in all, we ended up shooting around 20 maybe 21 days um, over the course of like a year. I'm really blessed that you got Larry Kazanoff involved. Um, he's a, 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 an old acquaintance of mine and I, and I am going to, I'm going to interview him too about the film. So I'm Great. very, very happy about that. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the colors appearing on the screen, you know, the symbolism um, during the film. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So Mina, the main protagonist of the story, she's an artist. And so she draws and sketches throughout the film. And it's kind of like a little bit of her peaceful or peace of heaven, um, her, her place where she retreats um, and connects back to her heart and connects to, to grounding and peace in the chaos of, you know, living on the house on the streets. And she kind of lives a little bit of a nomad life going from place to place and isolates herself a lot too. So she draws in the book. And so I wanted to create something to get into Mina's feeling and mind because she also sees the world differently because she um, 
has a mental illness. And so certain things are seen differently through her eyes. And so in a rather, um, you know, uh, raw and gritty world, when she draws, things come alive and things become colorful and um, um, also maybe fun. Um, and so whenever she draws, we had um, Incessant Rain, who's an amazing VFX house in Nepal, work with us. And so they created the actual dog of her burrito and animated him. And we um, had watercolor splash all over every time she draws. And just to bring that that piece of her onto the screen in contrast to, you know, the the rather gritty world she lives in. Oh, sorry. Uh, the painting behind you, do you yourself draw? Oh, this is actually, this is a beautiful painting done by my partner, Weston Hudson. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, he plays around with paint, or he used to. Um, I I sketch and draw, too. When I was a kid, I was um, drawing a lot. And I just recently, in the last, like, couple of years, started sketching and drawing a little bit, too. But nothing, like, professional. Um, now, why is no one willing to to help Mina? You know, it it seems like she's surrounded by friends and no one insists enough to help her. How you wrote that? Yeah, I think it's such a tricky conversation, help, especially when it comes to people that are viewed as in a um, position where they need help because it's such a judgment already to say, I need to help this person. Um, and I know a lot of times it's, it comes from a really, um, good, good hearted will and, and desire to, to want to help people, but it's also, I think it's sometimes not our place and it also has to be um, received by the person so that why it was a very important thing at the end when she's talking to the nurse she says I'm gonna need an audible yes from you my dear to hear if you are if you're willing or ready to accept help and that is actually the procedure when um, a patient is um, over 18 of course when a patient is um, admitted he, he, that patient has to say I am willing to accept help or I'm willing to start whatever it is, you know, um, the, the, the specific therapy. So, you know, Mina in the film has a lot of different people come and offer some sort of help or some sort of ease. Um, and that's why, that's why I said in the beginning, the story is really a story of the courage it takes to accept help. And I think we can all relate to that in some ways. I can relate to that in, in my own life. It's really easy for me to give and help people and, and you know, show up for people, but it's harder for me to receive. It's harder for me to ask someone, hey, um, you know, I really need help here because it, it makes you very vulnerable. Um, so I think it takes a lot of courage. So it, it I think it's a very complex conversation that I try to integrate in this story too that and a lot of times we as a society also don't know when it comes to homelessness we don't know how to help because you can't go to every single person and and bring them a meal or every single person bring them water right organizations can do that on a larger scale but what can we do as an individual right so what does this help really look like sometimes it can just be holding space for someone sometimes it can just be stopping looking someone in the eye and asking how are you doing it, it, it can be so many different ways um or sometimes it's also leaving a person alone and giving them privacy because they don't have privacy they're exposed 24 7 on the street there's no no privacy you know the things that we do at home in our privacy when we want to let off steam or when we're when we're when we're sad we want to ball and cry they don't have that privacy to do that so it, they're extra vulnerable and exposed so it's just yeah it's it's a larger conversation and and in, in the characters too they come from different angles right like you said there's some that are friends hey you can just crash with with me for a night then there's other people um that want to do it through religion hey you know 
we can pray for you and, and we can bring you to Jesus. Or then there's other, there's so many different ways that help can look like, but it all depends on the individual. It's not just one size fits all help type of thing. Cause again, these are all human beings with names, with backgrounds, with personalities, with needs, and, and they all look different. So help also looks different for each person. Is drug use to blame? For Mina feeling like she she needs to remain on the streets? That's an interesting question. I, I feel like it, it's not it's not really easy to pick one thing as a blame. I think it's it's a much more complex situation and all the different things that add into someone's story and someone's reasoning of why things are the way that they are. Um, substance abuse in Mina's case is definitely a factor, but I don't know if I would say that is a blame because it, it, there's so many different aspects that are keeping her on her journey on the streets until she's ready to accept help. It's all part of her journey, um, just amongst, I think, many other aspects as well. Yeah, congratulations. Is there anything else you want to say about the film? I also want you to talk to us about, you know, how we can find you, um, what's next for the film, what's next in your pretty little head about what you want to do next. Yeah, absolutely. So um, first of all, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. It's Yas Canley. That's my name. And then you can also um, find uh, us on uh, Instagram, My Home Unknown, also just the title of the film. You can also follow Wally Bird Productions, which is Diane Foster's production company and the main production company of the film. And um, with the film, so right now we have a few more, obviously, festivals that we're waiting to see where we're going because um, we just started with the festivals. And then... Uh, We've also been creating beautiful um, friendships and collaborations with nonprofits that work um, in the field of homelessness and mental health. So um, we're really proud to work with the Downtown Women's Center, who is amazing for uh, helping women um, in Los Angeles that are unhoused, and they have incredible programs. Amy Turk um, is the CEO, and she's absolutely wonderful. So we're collaborating with them. We're collaborating with the United Way LA as well. And then we're also collaborating with the McLean Hospital, who is a Harvard-led um, clinic uh, specializing in schizophrenia and mental illness. Uh, it's on the East Coast in the Boston area. We're also working with the Mike Kirk Foundation uh, in Nashville, uh, who were feeding a lot, a lot of homeless people um, during the um, pandemic. So what we're doing is we're planning um, some screenings with the nonprofits um, to create some um, um, momentum and raise awareness with them together um, and waiting for some more festivals. And then we're also started to go out to um, distributions. We hopefully um, can find a distribution company that um, matches our desires and our needs and our vision because we would like for the film to be um visible all over the world because I think it's a it's a it's a film it's a story it's a message that really is important right now and that um is really well received or can be very well received everywhere in the world I mean there's over 100 million people um experiencing homelessness in the world right now so um we feel like this this film is much needed right now we are the Hollywood Times dot today and our YouTube channel is the Hollywood Times official. And thank you Yaz, again for, for the time that you've taken. And I'm sure our paths will cross again because they keep doing. I so love that. I. <laughs> I love that. We're, we're, we're intertwined. I love, love it. it. Yes. Thank you. Thank and you keep so up much. the great work. And I know we'll, the, you know, our audiences, our viewers, our readers, you'll be hearing from them. So yes. And we'll keep in touch. I, I was so nice Thanks. talking to you, and I can't wait to see you again. Ditto. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.